Hello Kids Place friends. Welcome to another episode of Kids Place where kids come to play, learn, achieve, create, and explore. I'm Ms. Traherne and this is my co-host Mrs. Day. Let's start with our hello song. Hello friends, how are you? We're very happy to see you. Greet your neighbor, boogie on down. Give a bump and turn around. Welcome to episode three of Kids Place. We've been learning a lot about fire safety in school. We're gonna head on over to Oakville Elementary where we're gonna get to see Mrs. Butner's class stop, drop, and roll. back it's time to do our breathing from conscious discipline we use this as a calming strategy to get us ready to learn mm -hmm. so we've done episode one was the star breath episode two was the balloon today for episode three of season two we're going to do the drain and to start with the drain we're going to as can possibly happen you get tensed up so we're gonna start by putting our hands out, making a fist and tensing up. Make it tight as you breathe in. And then release it as you exhale. And relax okay. those muscles. All right, so we're gonna do that three times. Okay, and this is called the drain. So here we go. Breathe in. Relax your body. Breathe in. Relax your body. Third time, breathe in. Relax your body. And now we're ready to learn. All right, friends. We've been learning a lot about fire safety today, right? Yes. Well, something really exciting happened. After uh, one of our Kids Place friends learned about fire safety, they wrote to us. So we have our Yay! very first letter of season two. Would you like to read it with me? Who is it from? Okay, it's from our friend Zach. He writes, Dear Kids Place, if firefighters' clothes catch on fire, they stop, drop, and roll. Ooh. That's what we just saw, right? Miss Butner's class taught us. They did. He also says they cover their face, and I know that if there is smoke in your house, you crawl under it. These are really important tips. They it, are. They really are. He says, if your pets are still in there, the firefighters will go and get them. Yeah, that's really important, too. You want to make sure you get yourself out first. He writes, how do you become a firefighter? This is a good question, Zach. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of people can become firefighters. There's two different kinds. There's volunteer, and then there's people who make their whole careers out of it. But in order to be a firefighter, you have to be specially trained. Oh. There's all kinds of different tools and equipment that firefighters use. Equipment? What kind? Oh, so things like the fire truck or the fire engine. They have to learn how to drive that big vehicle. Ooh, yeah, that's tough. That would be tough. They also have to learn how to use the fire hose. Ooh, yeah. Yes. Um, and there's a bunch of different tools that they can use, like a special axe that can help um, break down the door if they need to, if that door handle is hot. I'm sure you've heard about that. You never want to touch those hot door handles, right? They also have to wear all that equipment and gear. They do. They have big 
suits that they wear in boots and gloves and helmets that help protect them from the heat of a fire. And all of that, they have to be super fast at getting that on and they have to practice that. Tough. Um, it is tough. Some other things that they can do is um, they learn how to take care of people if they're hurt. So they have some first aid training as well. That's a lot to do. It is a lot to do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah they're really brave for doing that. We're gonna head on over actually. I have a friend at the fire department and she's gonna show us her gear and then she's gonna read us a story about Pete the Cat who also gets to take a trip to the firehouse. Hi, I'm Janet Keister with the Ridge Fire Department and today I'd like to read to you a story called Pete the Cat, Firefighter Pete. And this is by James Dean. We are going on a class trip today, says Principal Nancy. She leads the class to a bright yellow bus. Everyone climbs on board. I wonder where we're going, said Pete. They're going to visit the firehouse today. The bus parks next to the bright red firehouse. Pete and his classmates are excited. The firehouse is huge. It's so big it can hold two long red fire trucks and all of the firefighters' equipment. The firefighters show the kids around. They give everyone a turn to ring the old brass fire bell outside the firehouse. Then all the kids take turns sliding down the firefighters' pole. Whee! Callie yells as she glides down. The firefighters allow the kids to try on their gear. Firefighters wear a lot of equipment. First, Pete puts on the heavy black overalls. Then he steps into the tall black boots. A firefighter helps Pete put on the heavy yellow jacket. Finally, they place a hard black helmet on Pete's head. All this gear is very heavy. Pete can barely move. The firefighters allow the kids to explore one of the fire trucks. Callie sits in the driver's seat. She presses the horn. Burn! It's so loud that all the kids cover their ears. Then Pete turns on the sirens and lights. The sirens blare. Woo wee, woo wee. The lights flash red and yellow. Suddenly a loud bell rings in the firehouse. Uh-oh, it's the fire alarm. There's a fire in town. Gear up, Pete. The firefighters scramble in their gear very quickly. Pete puts on his gear too. They all climb aboard the fire truck and turn the siren on and turn on the sirens and lights. Firefighter Pete and the firefighters are on their way. Woo wee, woo wee! The fire engine races through town and the lights flash round and round. A firefighter presses the horn. Burp! All of the other cars move out of the way. There's the fire. It's hot and loud, but the firefighters know exactly what to do. They work together as a team to connect the fire truck to the fire hydrant. Then the firefighters also attach a long, heavy hose to the truck. Firefighter Pete gives the signal, and the firefighters turn on the water. Whoosh! The water gushes out very fast. Several firefighters must hold the hose to control it. Pete helps direct the hose as they spray the fire with water. The fire is starting to go out. There is smoke everywhere. Suddenly, Pete hears yelling from the roof. Oh no, Grumpy Toad, he needs to be rescued. The firefighters raise a long ladder from the truck. Crank, 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 the ladder goes up and up and up. Firefighter Pete and another firefighter help Grumpy Toad climb down the ladder carefully. Yay, the fire is out and everyone is safe. The firefighters drive back to the firehouse. They take off all their gear. 
They pat Pete on the back and say, good job, Pete. Firefighter Pete helped save the day. The end. Today for our create segment, we are going to create something that is kind of a spoof on fire safety. Ooh. There is something that boys and girls should never play with, and that would be a lighter or matches. Yeah. So we are going to make a matchbook of fire safety tips. Okay. It's going to relate to what you did on the last show when you did a list. Oh, but we're okay. going to put our list on matches. Okay, cool. Okay? All right. So here's what you're going to need for this project. You're going to need paper. And I chose red for my matchbook. And we're going to use these black strips, almost like the match you strike on the, on the bottom of the matchbook. Okay. We're going to use the white for the matchsticks in the center and our markers for labeling things. Okay. And a glue stick to put it all together. And that should cover us. All right. So you're going to need to first cut your the size for your match strips. And I want to talk about my learning bucket. Oh, that's right. We talked about it during season one, but we really hadn't talked about it in season two. It's a good place. I used a bucket. You can use a pencil box or a little baggie or a little extra backpack, whatever you have lying around at home to hold your materials for projects. Mm -hmm. And it's a good place when you finish a project, if you have scraps, to keep your pencils and your glue sticks and your crayons and markers and tape, whatever it is. Last show we used paper plates for some things. I even have some craft sticks, yeah. cotton balls, whatever it is, we'll have them in one place. Mm -hmm. And I like the bucket because it has a handle and I can carry it to the room where I'm working or I can even hang it on a chair. So when I'm having a rainy afternoon, I can grab my learning bucket. Keeps everything nice and organized. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just a little tip for at home. Yeah. All right, so we have our red strips. And I made mine, it's about a half of a big piece of paper, okay. and then I folded it. If you have small paper, you can always tape it together to okay. make it. And then we're going to fold up for the bottom, okay. and then we're going to measure it so that the top goes inside ah, the matchbook. So if I okay? had folded it yet, we'd flap this first, and then mm -hmm. I would kind of tuck it in there. Yep. And then crease back. Okay. And then we're going to take our little black strips, which if you hadn't already, cut ah. those to match that flap, okay? okay? I'd already pre-cut mine. Okay. So we're gonna take our yep. glue good. stick and we're going to glue that on our little flap so it looks like a real matchbook. Thank there you, you for sharing. And then another good tip when you are using glue sticks to make sure you put that lid on until you hear it go snap. So you know it's gonna be fresh for next time, okay? All right, so the next thing we need to do is put the matches inside the matchbook. Okay. Now, this was scrap paper that I took out of my learning bucket, Aren't so it has kept not it? been measured. Okay. So I'm gonna put it inside my matchbook, and I'm going to, in order to make it fit, mm -hmm. I'm gonna fold it. Oh, okay. To match it up to make sure it goes inside my matchbook. Okay. And then I'm going to slide to make a crease. Okay. And then I'll uncrease it and I'll cut on that fold. Ah. And now, do you remember how to cut, boys and girls? All right. Thumb on top. And then we put our fingers in the bottom. And let's do a few practice. We open, open shut, shut, open, shut. Well, what about this hand? What does this hand do? Does it just have to hang out and be lazy? It doesn't. Oh no. This is your helper hand. The helper hand's gonna hold and move the paper mm -hmm. as the cutting hand has that thumb on top and is doing all the work. Okay. Now, we also want the length to fit. Mm -hmm. Mine's a little long. So mine too. 
So again, I'm going to fold it just a little bit to make sure that it fits, and then I'm going to close my matchbook to make sure. Oh. And again, I'm going to cut right on that fold okay. as my guiding line. Open, shut, open, shut. And I have these scraps that I can throw back in my learning bucket for another project. All right, now, oh my gosh, I have two. Yeah. One for a friend. Okay, I want to make these into matchsticks. Okay. So it kind of depends. For those of you who are young, you're going to write bigger than those who are a little bit older. Mm, that's a good point. So for my young friends, I'm going to make my matchsticks a little bit wider, okay. so I might have only three. Okay. If I'm a little bit older, I might be able to make five. Okay? So it depends. I'm going to make, I don't know, I'm going to, oh, good tip. I'm sorry, I forgot this. Down here where I'm going to glue it, I'm not going to cut all the way to the bottom. Oh. I'm going to cut strips for my matches, but I'm going to leave them connected. So I'm going to put my helper hand down there. Okay. So that I don't cut you past don't want to cut the helper all the hand. way. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I'm going to make mine for young people. I'm going to do three. Okay. I'm going to try four. Okay. And they're a little bit older. And I'm going to stop as I get close to my thumb. This is a little tricky. Mm -hmm. Get a little floppy. Make sure you take your time. Okay. Now. The part that is all um, uncut Correct. is where we're going to glue okay. underneath the flap. Okay. okay. So I'm going to put one stripe of glue. I turned it down. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Glue that in. Okay. And then on my matches, I'm going to write my fire safety tips. And oh. if you want to get creative, you can actually cut the tip, I mean, color the tips of your matches to make them look real. Most matches are red on the end. Yeah. So I could do that if I have crayons, which I have in the bottom of Got here. Some markers here. Mm -hmm. I could do that. I'm not going to do too much because I want to leave space to write my fire safety tips. Mm. color the tips so they look like real matches. Now, Zach gave us some good ideas he of really tips did. that we could write on these matches. To remember when you stop, drop, and roll, what did we see Miss Butner's class doing? They have to remember to cover, cover your their face. face. Um, another thing that you might consider is that thing in your house that gives us the signal when there's smoke. Mm -hmm. Check your smoke, smoke detectors. detectors. Yeah. Okay. So those are some of the tips. And then when you're finished with your tips, I always put a title on my little booklet. So this would be my fire safety tips book. And that's how you can make that at home to give you good reminders about fire safety. We got invited by our friends over at Green Holly to see a special visitor. Oh, yeah. The Bay District Fire Department joined them to teach them all about fire safety and let the kids see all those cool tools and equipment that we talked about before. Let's go explore.
Hello Kids Place friends and families. I am delighted to be here with our Bay District Fire Department and this is Mr. Keith Fairfax. And it is also my son's name is Keith Fairfax who's related <laughs> to her sister Lisa. <laughs> A little personal stuff there. Uh, I just want to mention that two years ago uh, we came to talk to the principal about adding a sprinkler system to the original part of Green Alley. The newer part was sprinkled for fire protection. The older building didn't get it. We work with the Board of Education, we work with the superintendent, we work with the commissioners, and of course it all revolves around budget. But this year, thank God, uh, working with these construction folks, they said, we'll get this in this they put a new roof on and heating and air conditioning, and it's 100% sprinkled property now, totally. So I'm ecstatic, to tell you the truth. So we're gonna get some pictures inside of, uh, it, I just wanna say, it's, nope. a, it's a great thing to do for our children. Okay. Oh yes, everyone is safe and protected, and yeah. thank you for coming to share the fire truck and the equipment with our pre-K students today, okay. Green Holly. It's always, it's always a pleasure for us to do this for the, our leaders of tomorrow. That's how we look at it. Thank okay. you. All righty. Thank you. Suppose there's something uh, burning on the stove. What will this do? What does that mean? That means we should go out. We should go out and stay out. So we have a smoke alarm going off in the house. We need to go outside and stay outside. Okay. okay. For the for the adults, this is the new 10-year battery smoke detector. You cannot take the battery out of this. This is free to anyone that can cannot afford it. Any of the fire departments will come and install this in your home or trailer or whatever. There is no reason that anybody in America should not have a smoke alarm in their home. We would prefer more than one smoke alarm, but I'll settle for one, okay? The other thing I want to cover is, do we play with matches and, light and lighters? No, 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 we don't play with that. All right. We should have one of these smoke, they call them up smoke alarms, they used to call them smoke detectors, one, at least one in every home. Don't hide, go outside. That kind of rhymes, doesn't it? Don't hide, go outside. Okay? Have an escape plan, get your mom and dad to get together. Fire Prevention Week is a good time to develop a plan. If you, if you happen to be in a house, and it's smoke, you say, stay low and crawl, okay? What happens if your clothes are on fire? Huh? What do you do? What is it? Stop, stop, drop, and roll. That's what happens if your clothes are on fire. You stop, you fall down, and you roll to keep the fire off you, okay? All right, what's the emergency number? If your house, or somebody is sick in your house, or you need a police officer, what's the number? It begins with a nine. That's it, 911. Go outside the house. Don't phone in the house. Go outside the house. Okay? So I think that's enough educational things for this group. For this group, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, how about let's get into the apparatus. How would you like to come in one at a time? We can put one in this side and we'll get you on the other side. How about that? Somebody's got This is what we call a wet sprinkler system. And if you see this great big pipe, it feeds all the sprinkler heads in the old portion of the Green Holly School. Now this is, this is where the water comes from the Metropolitan Commission. The water comes in, okay, this is a backflow preventer which prevents water from going back into domestic water 
and then this supplies all the sprinkler heads. Now, this guy here is a fire department connection. So if the water were to fail, fire department comes in and pressurizes the sprinkler system. So this is in their boiler room here, which is the main heat, air conditioning, that type of stuff. But the greatest fire protection that you can provide in a school where fire really never gets a chance to start, or I can't say start, but continue. Sprinklers come on, put the fire out, and it's a non-event. So this is truly uh, a real great addition to the Green Holly School. And there's a lot of people to thank from the commissioners to the superintendent to the construction division to the principal here at the school and uh, all the parents that came in and supported us in getting this sprinkler system in there. And I thank each and every one of you. I think that does it. If you would like to check us out more, you can find us at the local cable channel number 96 or on SMCPS YouTube. And you can also email us at kidsplace at smcps.org. It's that time in the show where we have to say goodbye. It is time to say goodbye to all our friends. It is time to say goodbye to all our friends. It is time to say goodbye. Give a smile and wink your eye. It is time to say goodbye to all our friends. Bye, friends. See you next time.